Okay, so D is saying there are reports that Saudi Arabia is building ballistic missiles with China's help. What are your thoughts on a Saudi-China alliance and how should the West react? Okay, so this is, oh my God, I could do an entire hour on this. So Saudi Arabia and China getting together. There are, the way, the way I want to look at it is from the, from a human rights perspective, right? Because that's what we do here. And I could see, I mean, I'm, I always see negatives, right? Obviously, but I'm going to try to also see positives here. Okay. So the negative here, the negative impact of this is kind of obvious. Um, as much as we keep complaining here about the United States human rights record and their hypocrisy and they are, they, you know, you know, guys, what I'm talking about. Like, don't let me get started about Yemen. And I oh, hope, like, the track record has been really bad, really bad. Like, ever since World War II, I guess we have, like, what they did in the Balkans, I guess, was good. But the track record has been devastatingly bad. Like, the record of being a good influence. I mean, okay, so... There, there are some good influence. There are like people, a lot of people notice Western countries, bad interventions, but there's also what, what people don't notice is that if there wasn't this Western ally alliance, you know, this post-World War II order that was created with the backing of the United States as a superpower, the world would be a lot more chaotic right now, okay? But that is harder to point out, point to, um, than all the mistakes that the United States make, makes. Okay, so what I'm, what am I trying to get at, right? What I'm trying to get at is that we, as much as the United States has made mistakes, on average, they are the best superpower you could ask for right now, okay? Um, and their net influence is a positive one. Again, don't get me wrong. If, like you guys know here at this channel, every time the United States does something devastatingly bad, we are here to point it out. But I still think that the structure that they have world, built around in the world has, crea has created a net positive in trade, in peace, in lowering a war, a, 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 a net benefit for everybody, a win-win scenario, a, as a level of security for all, for the entire world to be able to trade with the understanding that war is not as possible as it was used to before World War One and Two. Okay, um, so with that being said, I think like that push. Again, there is a push for by these countries that are allies with the United States, right? North from especially Western European countries, uh, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, North American countries. There is a push for a better human rights record, right? Like better, more, again, people might laugh at me saying that, if, especially given that we've been highlighting how much they've been hypocrites. However, there is that, at least that push does exist. It might not be priority number one, two, three, four, five. It might be no, priority number, I don't know, 35, okay, for these countries, but it the, the push for it is there, okay, for some standard of human rights, okay? What what we have with China is that that, that priority is not even there. Like, so, for example, with countries... Like I know like economies and the weapon, like the military industry and their profits and the oil industry, those are all priority number one, two, and three. But human rights is one of those priorities. It might be way down the list, but it is on their goddamn list. The problem I have with a country like China, again, I should say the CCP, not China. I don't want to condemn the entire Chinese population. The problem with the CCP is that that priority is way 
farther down the list. Again, I, I might want to say it's non-existent, but it is not non-existent because the world makes it, I mean, again, other countries make it so that it has to be somewhat of a priority, okay? Um, but it's way, way farther down the list, okay? So the problem with countries like China is like, as much as we criticize the United States for buddy, being buddy buddies with Saudi Arabia and not pushing them for a better human rights record, the push is still there, okay? The push is somewhat there. Um, but the push would be l l less there if China was an, if China is an alternative, okay? It's, when I again, I'm not delusional. When I say China being an alternative, it's not like they're going to replace the United States. It's not even close. Not even close. A lot of people talk about the influence of China as if it's, they're going to become the world superpower any day now. Um, they're not going to become the world superpower. Okay, um, they're going to become more and more influential. Uh, but they are the gap. A lot of people underestimate the gap between China and the United States right now. The gap is huge huge um but even if it's some if, if it's there as an alternative the pressure would be somewhat less it's not going to be disappear but it's going to be a bit less okay on, on countries like saudi arabia and the islamic republic of iran to clean up their act okay so that's the negative aspect so like you don't when you the closer countries like saudi arabia are getting to china china that's one negative of it aspect of it but i don't want to always just be like telling you like everything is horrible everything is horrible things are always bad okay so let me give you the positive aspect of this okay um china has a close relationship is good i mean this is going to have a close relationship with both saudi arabia and the islamic republic of iraq okay so it would be within the best interest of China for these for these two people, for these two entities, not to fight with each other. <laughs> okay, so um so the more so okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is that with when it comes to internal human rights violations, like when it comes to Islamic Republic um being brutal to its own people and Saudi Arabia's government being brutal to its own people, I think this have a slightly negative impact, okay? But there, there might be a, a much larger positive impact because the more countries get involved in trade in this region, the more it would be, the more interest they will have in not to see conflict in the region, okay? Because just there's just trade, it's just like people are doing business, right? And you don't want to see the flow of that to 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 go away, right? Um so China coming and being both having economic ties with the a country like Iran and also a country like Saudi Arabia might mean that out front conflict like head-to-head -head direct conflict between countries like that would we be against the interests of bigger powers that be and therefore there would be less it would be harder to be able to push for that however smaller conflicts would be more likely like could still be very likely right? you know what i mean especially given that you're selling missiles okay so if you're selling missiles the more missiles you know, and also like even smaller things, like if you have proxy wars, that's good for business, right? If you have like, just like you, you send your militia and they support this other militia over there, like some level of conflict is good for business, right? But what the more economic ties these regions, these different actors in these regions have with each other and they have with bigger, super bigger powers like China, like United States, like other, like India, right? Yeah, especially India. That they, they want to have like their own economic corridor going through that region, right? So conflict would be against the interests of all these other economic forces. So it reduces the likelihood of 
full on like head to head wars, right? And so that's a positive thing in my opinion. Uh, what should the West, how do, should the West react? I think like the Biden administration is doing the right thing. I think the Biden administration is um, refocusing their attention where it belo where, where it's going to make the best influence, like right in um, the, China's uh, backyard. Like I think like the Trump administration was such, a, it was such a disaster that they got out of the Trans-Pacific deal the pivot for, to the East by, that has started from Obama. I'm so glad to see the Biden administration moving in there, especially given the how much, how welcome that is from countries like um, Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, Australia, all that neighborhood. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a win for all those countries over there that are being bullied by the CCP to have like a, like this is once one positive form of intervention that I could get behind, right? Just being there, just making sure that there's some stability that, and and also to see like countries like Vietnam and or Philippines are not being bullied around. Like these are our United States allies. All right, let me, let me get rid of this, but. All right, blocked spammer in the live chat. All of these countries who are being bullied, like they welcome the intervention of a country like United States. And this is another form of in, like intervention that is good, right? Vietnam, Philippines, they need the help. They need the help um, of United States in that region. Okay, so that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, so that's how, that's how you should respond to China. How should you respond to China in the Middle East? I don't think United States has, I think United States, oh, I mean, the Abrahamic Accords was a good move. So some, one thing you could like congratulate the Trump administration for, like few things that, on the very few things that you could congratulate the Trump administration for um, is the removal of uh, Soleimani, the Abrahamic Accords, and also, what was that operation warp speed or whatever resulted to that thing that we have right now that I can't mention because you to be dumb uh, that is getting rid of the pen, the, 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 the disease that's going on like that, you know, you could congratulate the Trump administration for how fast that came about. Again, I know it was the scientists, but still like they fought, they pushed for it very heavily. Anyways, I think in, um, create like United States, creating being um creating allies in the region using its economic force and its political power that it has rather than using its military force in united states united states can spend its political uh, and economical uh, capital to push more countries in the region to for them to have economic more stronger economic ties with each other um and again, like I think, like China getting involved in the Middle East is not necessarily doesn't have to necessarily be a bad thing for United States. I think it might help if China comes in and has a stabilizing effect in that region because it has economic interest for stability in that region. It might even benefit the United States for Ch China's influence in that region, okay? I know I'm being very optimistic about this, but it might, okay? Uh, it might be like, instead of spending so much military uh, expense on stabilizing the region, just like having more trade with China and within each, each other do that. Like that's a more way more economically friendly way um, of, of achieving the same goal. Yeah, somebody's saying in the left, yeah, China stabilizing countries is good. Yeah, guys, the issue we have with China is, um, is the CCP, okay? We have to be careful not to just paint everything China does with a negative br or brush, right? um we have to be um like at the china's economy growing it's a good thing not just for the chinese people but for the for the world okay 
the CCP being on the right for that, that's a negative thing, okay? But China grow, growing, is, we want China to grow. You know, it's good for the United States, it's good for China, it's good for all the countries that will benefit from China's, you know, a stronger economy, having its people having higher buyer power and just buying from the rest of the world. And, you know, what would that lead to? It would lead into more people making money everywhere else where they're trying to appeal to these Chinese customer base. That's fantastic. That's a fantastic thing. Um, in fact, one reason why we're against one reason why we're against the CCP is not it is not the fact that they are being involved everywhere. Like, yeah, be involved everywhere, be involved economically everywhere. Um, is the fact that actually they're actually slowing this growth for the sake of making sure that they maintain the power. Like, it seems like the CCP itself doesn't want is sacrificing the growth of of its own people because to make sure that the balance between the power of ccp and the ba ba the power of the chinese people stays distant right because if the chinese people's purchasing power grows too fast then the balance between the ccp and the rest of the chinese people will be uh too uh, low enough for that to be a threat to the CCP. Okay, this is why the CCP is going after celebrities with too much influence, with um, economic, with with uh, rich people, and in, in, in anybody that has made it to like has, all the private companies that are becoming too powerful, all the entrepreneurs that have become too rich. Like the CCP is now going after them because they can't see too much power. So they were, because that would be a threat to their own power, right? So imagine how devastating that, that is. Like there is a limit to how much you can grow independently from the CCP in China before you become, you, you show up on the radar and now they want to like maybe take you out, right? I mean, look at the CEO of Alibaba right now, right? What's, what the hell is happening to him, right? This is really scary. So... Yeah, we want China to grow. And CCP is like, China is growing not because of the CCP. China is growing in spite of the CCP, okay? Um, so the CCP is anti-Chinese growth. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.